שוטטתי במלון, ואז ראיתי קיר מלוכלך. ואני רואה שאף אחד לא צבא ולא מנקה. סימן שאף אחד לא רואה מה שאני רואה. אז אם אף אחד לא רואה מה שאני רואה, אני מאוד מיוחד ואני המשיח. Schizophrenia is a disease that's not uncommon, but also not particularly common, afflicting about 1% of the population, give or take, in their lifetime. But the impact that that disorder has on the patients, on their families, and on the social system as a whole in Europe is truly staggering. Every year across Europe, almost 100,000 million euro have to be spent to take care of patients with schizophrenia. Those are 100 billion euro, a truly staggering amount. Schizophrenia usually starts in the middle of the 20s. The range is between age 15 to age 30. The prevalence is equal between men and women, although the disease in men is usually more chronic with more negative signs and symptoms. Sometimes schizophrenia can start before age 18. In this case, we call it early onset schizophrenia. This is more severe disease and the damage to cognitive development of the adolescent is more severe. I am in the 20th century with schizophrenia psychiatric disease. In fact, if I think about it, the disease was already in my childhood, the behavior of my child הייתה קצת מוזרה, ואני זוכרת שהדיבור שלי לא היה בדיוק נורמטיבי, כלומר, היו לי כל מיני רעיונות מוזרים ודברים כאלה, אבל המצב שלי הלך והידרדר עד שבאיזשהו שלב כבר לא יכולתי יותר. סכיזופרניה has no known etiology, and the symptoms and signs may be prominent and influence the life of the person and his family. DSM-5, the book of symptoms and signs in psychiatry, gave five symptoms and signs that may be actual or found in schizophrenia. The first one is delusions. A delusion is a false belief that the person holds and there is no way to persuade him that actually he is wrong. He may believe that someone is following him, someone talking behind his back, someone tries to kill him or poison him, שמעתי קולות והייתי בטוחה שהם משתלטים לי על המחשבות ושרודפים אחריי ושרוצים ממני כל מיני דברים ושאני אפגוש אנשים שירביצו לי כלומר המון המון פחדים המון חששות והמון המון בלבול היה לי שם. Delusions can get the form of grandiose delusion you think that you have special powers you think you are the messiah you are very rich or very beautiful ונכנסתי למלון כדי, חשבתי שיש שם חייזרים ש... ש... שבאו לכבוש את העולם. כשנסעתי לאילת ראיתי שהירח זז יחד עם האוטובוס, ואז הבנתי שמהצד האפל של הירח באים חייזרים לתקוף את כדור הארץ, והם ינחתו במלון ומשם יתחיל התקיפה של כדור הארץ. ואז כמובן יצאתי ונכנסתי ל... Another kind of delusions may be delusions of guilt. Another symptom are hallucinations. An hallucination is a false perception of something that is not happening in reality. For example, I can hear voices talking to me, whereas other people in the room cannot hear them. Another symptom is what we call negative symptom or the cluster of negative symptoms. These symptoms include amotivation, evolution, depression, lack of functioning. Sometimes these symptoms are more severe than other symptoms that we call positive symptoms, such as delusions and hallucinations. Another set of symptoms are disorganized behavior. Sometimes a patient is not talking about delusion and hallucinations, but you can see his behavior and understand that he is in a psychotic state. הרגשתי מאוד מאוד רע, ואני זוכרת שהגעתי לאשפוז בבית חולים פסיכיאטרי פה בירושלים. בעצם מאז היו לי למעלה מ-40 אשפוזים לדעתי. Usually we have deterioration in functioning in either studying, working, family life, or any other field of functioning. Some 
patients who suffer from schizophrenia can be very high functioning. A very famous example is Professor John Nash that accepted the Nobel Prize while he was suffering from schizophrenia. Schizophrenia influences not just the patient, also the family. Family goes through a hell sometimes. When a patient starts schizophrenia, he may become paranoid to his family, his closest friends, Sometimes you don't know what's going on. It takes some time to get to diagnosis. But even after we diagnose a patient with schizophrenia, he needs lots of help and compassion from his environment. ובעצם מה שהביא את השינוי האמיתי שלי בחיים היה זה שהכרתי את מי שהיום הוא בעלי. אני חושבת שבעצם השינוי המשמעותי היה זה שהוא ראה אותי פעם ראשונה, מי שהוא ראה אותי פעם ראשונה בתור בן אדם. לא בתור חולה. באמת, אם אני מסתכלת עשר שנים אחורה, השאיפה הכי גדולה שלי בחיים הייתה אה, לא להתאשפז יותר מחודשיים, כאילו להישאר בחוץ יותר מחודשיים. זו הייתה התקווה הכי גדולה שהייתה לי בחיים. This is the frontal cortex, the frontal lobe of our brain, that responsible for our personality, our cognitive abilities, and our breaks. And we know that people with schizophrenia will suffer from damages in this area in both sides. One of the most prominent findings in imaging of brains of patients that suffered from schizophrenia is actually inside the brain, in this area. Here we have a cavity full of fluid called CSF, cerebrospinal fluid. And in patients with schizophrenia, we see enlargement of these areas with the fluid inside. Some people think that the reason is losing gray matter on the brain that allow these areas to be larger. We actually don't know the real reason. The treatment of schizophrenia is a topic that requires cooperation between the patient, his family and caregivers and physicians. And it rests on several pillars, if you will, one of which is drug therapy, the other one psychotherapy, and third is looking at the patient's environment and work and in family contexts. Today, what we want to achieve is full recovery of patients and full reintegration into their daily lives. So we tend to treat people where they live, where they become ill, and we try to ensure that the contact to their workplace, to their family and their friends is not lost. I can tell you that I have a child who is dealing with schizophrenia. It's very difficult. At age 32, she has schizophrenia. And it has been a long time in the hospital. And today, for more than 10 years, I can tell you that she is a kind of story of dream. She is working. The most important progress actually has been quite a number of decades ago. In the mid of the preceding century, a group of drugs was found. Those drugs are called the antipsychotics or the neuroleptics. And since their initial development, there have been many variants of these drugs, all of which are relatively similar in how they work. We now know that they block a receptor for a neurotransmitter, a chemical in the brain that's important for the way nerve cells talk with each other called dopamine. So those are dopamine receptor blocker. What they do is to address what has been called the positive symptoms of schizophrenia, things like hearing voices, disorganized behavior, being delusional, being afraid. These kinds of things are well treated by neuroleptics or antipsychotics, whereas things that are more subtle, things like the drive to get out of bed in the morning, the ability to structure your day, to go to work, your interest in dealing with others, having friends, these things which are often impaired in schizophrenia and which we call the negative symptoms are not well treated at all by the current class of drugs. You can see that almost as soon as these drugs were brought into treatment, the amount of patients in hospital keeps dropping, 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 and uh, patients were able to leave the hospital and be reintegrated into society. Unfortunately, in the preceding decades, no truly novel additional drug treatments have been found. We know also that if you have schizophrenia very early in life, such as early onset schizophrenia, you lose some material of the brain during development unless you are getting treatment on time. All this sulci that you may see in the brain will be lost 
if a person suffers from schizophrenia for a long period of time without taking medications. Psychotherapy in patients with schizophrenia is important, but it's also limited in its impact, just as drug therapies are. You can't cure schizophrenia by either of these therapies, but every patient with schizophrenia should have some forms of psychotherapy. Finally, patients with schizophrenia often need help in getting back into work, getting back into school or university. Also, sometimes need help with their social life, such as seeing friends, activities throughout the day. If you ask patients with schizophrenia what the worst bit, they will tell you stigma. Not only do you have a terrible disease, you're also blamed for it. People keep their distance from you and they're often afraid of you. I came to the hospital, of course, after the mental health issue. Also, the fact that I went to the world and also גם מהעניין ש... של הסטיגמה, כשהבנתי שאני נפגע נפש אחרי שעיצבו אותי בבית חולים עם, עם תרופות. וכשהמשמעות נלקחת מאדם, בין אם הוא סובל מסכיזופרניה או לא סובל מסכיזופרניה, קשה לו לתפקד ביום-יום שלו. אז חלק מהתפקיד שלנו, החברתי, זה להחזיר את המשמעות לאנשים. בשלב מסוים קיבלתי המון תמיכה ו- וחיבוקים, ובאמת אם את צריכה אותנו נעזור לך והכל, ויחס נורא נורא טוב. חלק מתהליך ההחלמה זה באמת בנייה של אני חדש. אני בעקבות המחלה גיליתי את כישרון הכתיבה שלי, הוצאתי גם ספר ציפורת, הוצאתי גם ספר שירים, עכשיו אני בתהליך של הוצאת ספר ילדים. There are more studies and papers on schizophrenia than on any other medical condition. Yet, we have no idea what causes schizophrenia. We are sure that there is a genetic factor. You may inherit schizophrenia from your parents or even from other generations. So if you can find a gene that will increase your risk of having the disease and figure out how that gene works in brain, you might have an avenue towards understanding biological mechanisms that might help you, if you're lucky, to find new treatments. We know that being born in a city, for example, increases your risk for the illness by more than double. In fact, probably around triple the risk of someone who's been born in the country. And that finding that has been found across the world is intriguing because it highlights that there might be some aspects of your social environment that might increase your risk for schizophrenia. Another example that's especially interesting in Europe is that if you're a migrant, if you're a person who doesn't live in the country in which you were born, and even if you're second-generation migrants, meaning your parents have moved to the new country, but you yourself been born in the new country, your risk of schizophrenia is also double that of a non-migrant. One of the first things is really to complete with the fact that you're a disease, to increase the stigma, to see that the disease is not the end of the world, that you can live with it, and you can live with it even with it good. צריך לזכור שרוב הזמן אנחנו בסדר, וצריך לאפשר לאנשים להיות בסדר, צריך לעזור להם להיות בסדר, ולא להישאר בעולם הזה של המחלה ושל, ושל השיגעון ושל החוסר שפיות, ולא לא לסמן אותנו, לא לתייג אותנו בתור שונים ואחרים, אלא לתת הזדמנות להצטרף לעולם הרגיל, כי לפעמים זה מין מעבר כזה בין עולמות, ואתה צריך... להילחם כדי להישאר בעולם הרגיל. לא תמיד אני בטוחה שהבחירה שלי היא לגמרי קלה, כי לפעמים אני חושבת שהיה יותר קל כבר לאבד את הכל, להשתגע וזהו. אבל כשאני מסתכלת על הילדים שלי, כשאני מסתכלת על בעלי, אתה יודע, יש לי בית קטן עם גג אדום וגדר לבנה, וכאילו שתי מכוניות וחתול, והחיים שלי נורא יפים ונורא נורמליים, ובאמת זה היה שווה את זה. כאילו כשהילד שלי אומר לי, אם הוא שאני אוהב אותך, אז כאילו השמיים בשבילי.